Oh my goodness, I don't know why I am so nervous right now, but I feel like we're due for this conversation. You know when people say that apparently when you turn 25, it's like something clicks in your brain and everything changes, you see everything clearer, you feel more confident in yourself. I feel like that's about to happen. And the last time I did this sort of sit down video, I was 22 talking about who I am and I feel so different at 24. And I think it's because so many things happened this past year. First, I went leaseless for the first time in my life. Second thing is I got promoted to senior product manager this year, which is a, I would say more so title that I've been chasing ever since I started work three and a half years ago. Third is I had this realization about social media content creation really as a hobby that I feel like has introduced a much better balance for me. And the fourth thing, this idea of being healthy and fit truly to me has a brand new meaning. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Personally, I'm making this because turning 25, hmm, so the thought of being in my mid twenties scares me but something about being in my early 20s, I just wish I had heard this from someone. I wish someone had sat me down and been like, yo, relax, everything's gonna be all right because you're going to be turning 25 and you're going to feel this way. And a lot is gonna happen in your path to making these realizations. And to be honest, you still don't have it figured out, okay? Don't get me wrong, but you're going to be in a much better place. So let's dive into the first thing I was talking about because it has been one of the most exciting, fun things that I've ever done in my life. And that is not being tied to a lease. If you follow me on like Instagram or TikTok or anything like that, you know I love traveling. I love having new experiences. I think it's just because growing up, I didn't really have too much of that. And the first time I really had gone and even visited other states in the United States was maybe for my internship going to Seattle. I just never really got out of the California bubble. And in the first few years of work, I, I definitely felt like I needed to be stable in terms of where I was living, not having to think about like moving or anything like that or traveling. And so that made sense to me to sign a lease, stay in one place, really focus on getting a hang of what it means to start working full time. In November of 2022 hit where I had been tied to a lease in San Francisco for a year, 14 months actually, had been consistently going into the office for 14 months. I felt like I was stable and confident enough at work to be able to take on a new challenge and say, hey, what if we tried moving around a bit more? Because especially in San Francisco, yes, you'll live in a neighborhood and tell yourself, oh, I'm gonna visit XYZ neighborhoods on the evenings, on the weekends and things like that. But when it really comes down to it, what I found myself doing was I'm tied to a 14 month lease. Hey, I'll do it next weekend. And so what we ended up doing, me and three of my friends, three of my closest friends, three of my most beloved friends from college, we decided to do monthly Airbnb stays throughout San Francisco. And this felt like the perfect first step for me because we're not changing it up so dramatically, right? We're still seeing the same friends. We're still working the same time zones. I'm still able to head into the office. We're simply just boop, boop, boop around San Francisco. And so in the last seven, eight months, really started January, we've been trying out different neighborhoods in San Francisco. I've been in Marina, I've been in Pack Heights, Lower Pack Heights, Nopa, Mission Dolores, things like that. And guess what? I'm now in Berlin. <laughs> so this is sort of the next step, I feel like, of what it's like to digital nomad. Something about being in Europe, now I truly feel like a digital nomad. Now, if you want the latest on all that, definitely follow me on Instagram because I am posting so much about my travels here. When I tell you all, I love new experiences. I love meeting new people, the culture, getting really a sense of what a new city is like. Oh, my favorite part is sharing it. Best, best thing ever. And I hope, I hope that's what my, me sharing about my experiences is able to give to someone else. That and I love stumbling upon other people who are from the cities that I'm exploring and them telling me more about it because I'm like, Oh, I'm in your home. Like I'm, I'm here, a tourist in your home. So that's how digital nomading has been. I have loved it so much. I don't know where I'll be 
at 25 if I'll still be digital nomading. The year of 24 for me was definitely the most exciting housing situation that I've ever been in and I've loved it so much. And if anyone wants another video about how I pack for the moves, how I plan the moves, how I look for Airbnbs and whatnot, ask someone who's a remote worker, do let me know because I am more than happy to really dive into it. Now let's talk about becoming senior product manager. When I started work, I feel like I really latched on to, I needed to latch on to some concept of what does it mean to be successful after college? And the easiest thing that I could grasp was promotions. To be successful in the workplace means you get promoted. The title change of senior product manager has always felt like the next big milestone. And now that I'm here, I have so many mixed emotions about it. While the way I was thinking about it in the past probably did contribute to getting me to where I am today, I think I just stressed too much about getting to this title. I remember every single career conversation and we would have these maybe twice a year. What would it take for me to get to senior product manager? I thought so much about the title that I didn't really think about the essence of what it meant to be of that caliber. And this really came into play because my partner works at a company where you don't see what titles other people are. You are simply a software engineer or you are a product manager. And so when I learned about this, it really got me thinking. If you were to take away my title, could you even tell that I'm a senior product manager? Why am I so hung up on this title when what I truly want to do is have the skill set and way of speaking and way of working with people in a way where it feels like I've been in the industry for a while and have mastered these skills that perhaps on paper would level me as a senior product manager. I feel chasing that title has really limited me in working on developing those key skills that I want to have. Okay, you're just gonna have to let me ramble for a bit because I don't know how to put into words exactly how I feel right now. I don't want to wait until I have the perfect way of saying these things to make a video and share it with you all because I think that's where I get so held up in posting. I just think that I need to put this filtered version of myself out there because this is a very professional career driven YouTube channel. But at the end of the day, no, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying my best. So bear with me here, okay? What I'm trying to say is that back when I was a PM1, PM2, to some degree, I'll be honest, I felt like I could hide behind the title. I felt like people were still seeing me as a newer PM. And so when I'm hearing about how, oh, this other company does it in a way where you actually can't see titles at all, you're really focusing so much on just, what is this person like to work with? I kind of wish we had that because it would have made me focus so much more on, hey, what is Evelyn like to work with? And that's something that I don't necessarily know if I've ever really focused on in the past. How am I as a coworker, as a teammate, as someone you want to work with. To me, a senior PM is very on top of not only the product, but also helping others in their career in a way that's very respectful and considerate and supportive. Just being able to work with someone of that caliber that is so incredibly talented at what they do, that they're able to look beyond their current scope that to me is very telling of a senior product manager. And I felt like that's what I had been missing this entire time when I've been chasing the title because I've been chasing impact specifically on our product, but not necessarily, do people want to work with me? How am I as a coworker? How am I as a teammate? I really rambled there, didn't I? The next thing. So this is to any of you all who are either content creators or just people who are very busy with their hobbies in a way where you feel like your hobbies almost create a sense of pressure in a way where you feel like you're losing that sense of enjoyment with your hobby and it's starting to become more like a chore or a task and it's introducing more stress in your life than it is enjoyment. When I first started out YouTube, yeah, YouTube was actually my first platform. It was so fun. It was so fun because it was so low stakes. I made videos, honestly, kind of like today, where I didn't really think too much about who was going to see it. But as this channel grew and as I started on Instagram and TikTok, and I really started to look at the numbers, and as more people started to find my content, 
I felt more and more this need to become a filtered, put together version of myself. And that really stressed me out because I would start to spend evenings and weekends stressing over scripting these videos, trying to make them as perfect as possible. And it led to me having to give up a lot of other things in my life. But what I've realized over the past seven months, seven, eight months is the power of Instagram and TikTok as a place to still feel connected to you all while not having to put in the extreme effort, time and whatnot that I did with YouTube. And so that's all to say, if you find yourself stressed, if you find yourself with a hobby that you no longer feel is as fun as you used to think it is, take a, take, take a breather, okay? Take a breather, try something different because trust me, when you really take a step back and start remembering why you were doing this in the first place, it makes everything so much easier. If you feel like you're at a place where something's a little bit stale, scrap that idea. If you're giving up your joy and passion for it, try something new. And that's where I really feel like I found my stride with Instagram at the moment where I'm constantly giving you guys story updates. I'm able to reach you all more real time. I mean, I've been talking to a lot of creator friends recently where the numbers do hurt. Like, I mean, I'll be honest, switching over to the fun videos that I wanna make, posting stories every day, I'm losing followers. And it hurts, but at the end of the day, I think whatever will get you to be consistent, do that. But I'm starting to see the tide turn. I'm starting to find the people that are enjoying the content that I'm able to consistently share with you all. Whew, okay, well, let's talk about one more topic because this year has been the biggest breakthrough that I've ever had mentally and physically. It wasn't until this past few months, actually. It wasn't until, I want to say specifically June, when I signed up for Pilates. And it made me realize, maybe I've just been doing the wrong kind of workouts this whole time. I've been doing these high intensity workouts because I always wanted to be so efficient with my workout. For the first time in my life, I understood what people talk about of I love working out because it's time for myself. And the reason why I think I felt that is because for the first time in my life, I took away this need of being entertained during my workouts. In the past, whenever I work out, if I'm running, I'm listening to a podcast to not think about anything else going on in your life, but to just be here for an hour, to be present with yourself. And that was the most life-changing realization I've ever had about fitness. That is my hour of peace. I'm someone who's always multitasking. No, no, no. Working out is now my time to be with myself. And that realization has just been everything for me. And I can't believe it took me so many years to get to a point in my life. This is all to say that I'm in a place where I'm happier than I've ever been in my life before. And I, I hope this isn't the peak, okay? I hope I'm still climbing up but in the past six, eight months, I feel like I've just made so many realizations and breakthroughs. Oh, and I can't wait to watch this video back when I'm 26 and me to think, what was she thinking at 24? Like, what do you mean you had these realizations? Because more, I'm sure so many more are to come. It's crazy though. That thing they say about turning 25, I, I truly think it's so real. Now don't get me wrong, there's still so much I need to figure out and so much, so many challenges that I'm still working through. But to that girl that you saw in those videos, I've been making YouTube videos since I was 21, 22. I'm terrified to turn 25. The thought of being in my mid 20s is so scary to me. I think partially it's just because the expectations are different. I, I just constantly am thinking about where I should be in life and whatnot and it stresses me out and something about being younger has always felt safer. The younger you are, the less people expect from you. The older you get, just I feel like there are more and more expectations and I think that's what really scares me. I'm so sorry for how rambly this video was. At the end of the day, to be completely honest, this video is for me. As much it is, as it is for any of you all who are going through something similar that I just want to share my experience with. Okay, that is all. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you could just let me know what I should be looking forward to in my mid-20s and anyone in their early 20s or late 20s. 
let me know what you're facing right now. Let me know what I have to look forward to. Let me know if there are any questions about your early 20s that I can help answer. I missed you guys. I really missed this. Let me quickly show you all, by the way, my view this whole entire time. Welcome to Frederickstrand. I think that's how you say it. I've been loving it here. Oh, now it's busy. Look, so many people. Ah, I had the best view while talking to you all. All right, I'll talk to you all in the comments. As always, you know where to find me if you are looking for more regular updates or just want to peek at what my day-to-day -day in Berlin looks like at Evelyn Shares on Instagram. Okay, I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for being here. Bye. And to be honest, I am mainly using a blanket because I'm wearing pajama bottoms right now. I'm that lazy. Okay.